You are about to hear a story based on actual events. To protect the innocent, names and places have been changed. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers bring you Mr. Charles Lawton in a story taken from life. Tonight's presentation of... Suspense! Tonight, Autolite presents Neil Cream, Doctor of Poison, a story concerning a man historically famous as the most notorious poisoner who ever lived, starring Mr. Charles Lawton. Hello, Harlow. Well, hi, Hap. Boy, you just can't beat the system, can you? What system? Why, the electrical system of your Autolite-equipped car. And it works for you every time you press the starter button, blow your horn, light your lights, or use your radio or heater. Harlow, you mean Autolite makes coils, distributors, and all the other important units that make up the complete electrical system? They sure do, Hap, with all units and their thousands of component parts related like a team. By Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. Harlow, even I couldn't improve on that. Thank you, Hap. So, friends, because the electrical system is so important to the smooth and efficient operation of your car, treat your car to a periodic checkup. See your car dealer or visit your nearest authorized Autolite service station listed in the classified section of your telephone directory. Or call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. She will quickly tell you the address of the authorized Autolite service station nearest you. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with Neil Cream, Doctor of Poison, and the performance of Mr. Charles Lawton, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Cream. May I see her now, Doctor? Dr. Cream, there was nothing I could do. I'm sorry, terribly sorry. I tried everything. You tried everything? Sorry? I did what I could. It was too late. <laughs> Don't go in now. I must go in. I must, I must see her. I'm sorry. Emily? Emily. Baby girl. Emily. Emily? My wife's dead. Come away. I'll attend to things. You don't understand. She's dead. I wasn't with her. I didn't know ever in my love. My little girl. Dr. Cleave, oh, no, 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 no. She got me my life. My... Oh, Emily. 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 Well, that was Emily, my only wife. She left me a widower with an income of uh, 400 pounds a year. It's rather extraordinary how long it took her to die. To look at the girl, you'd never have thought it. She was thin and sickly, but in possession of what must have been the constitution of an ox. I'd been poisoning her steadily for six months and expected her certainly to die within three. It was a case history for the medical journal. So I wrote them a paper about it, anonymously, of course. Inspector Waring. Uh, Sergeant Dean, sir. I've got a letter here from the editor of the medical journal. Why did they forward it to the yard? Uh, there's a manuscript that came with the letter. Just a moment, sir. Hmm. Resistance to physiological action of alkaloid poisoning. Case history C, quite anonymous. Well, what's the matter with that? The medical journal people seem to feel that the man who wrote it did the job, too. Uh, put it on my desk. I'll be there in half an hour. Right, sir. <laughs> Three weeks after Emily died, I made arrangements to move to London. There was no trouble, but then I hadn't thought there would be. The good doctor had made out a certificate based upon the history which I supplied. I had decided upon a refined intestinal disorder which bore a magnificent Latin name and closely paralleled the symptoms brought about by the poison administered. So much for the late and unlamented Emily Cream. Emily! 
Most suitable, sir. Oh, Doctor, Doctor Cream, Doctor Neil Cream, ma'am. Oh, how nice! I have another boarder who's a doctor. Well, very nearly. Medical student, don't you know, Mr. Bridgman? Ever such a nice gentleman. Oh, really? You'll find a very refined atmosphere in my house, Doctor, and scrupulously clean. Very scrupulous. I'm sure of that, Mrs. Minns. I think this will do very nicely. May I ask, Doctor, how long you plan to allow us the pleasure of your company? I'm afraid I have no idea of that, Mrs. Minns. You see, I've only just arrived from Hull. My, uh, my, my wife died there a month ago. Oh, how sad. How terribly sad. See, I thought that here in London I might forget. You look understanding. You, you do understand, don't you? Oh, but, but poor dear man. Of course. Oh, my, how I understand. I'm a widow myself. Only my daughter, Daisy, and me. How oh, I do feel for you. You're so kind. Oh, no, not at all, I'm sure. Uh, you will join us for tea, won't you? Oh, I should be delighted. Thank you so much. I had found a boarding house in Bloomsbury off the Tottenham Court Road. The proprietress, Mrs. M the proprietress, Mrs. Minns, was a tall, bony sort of woman, a type that I particularly despise, not at all nourishing to a man of my disposition. Now, the um, daughter she'd mentioned, I hoped would be a better prospect, but I knew that I would have to be careful there. After unpacking, I went down to tea. Oh! I'm awfully sorry. I didn't mean to bother. Oh, it's quite all right, I'm sure. You must be, you must be the new boarder, Dr. Cream. Yes, I, I've been asked into tea. Oh, they're waiting for oh. you. You're in for it. I'll pass muster, as poor old Dad used to say. Dear, oh dear, is that dreadful? Ah, uh, you'll see. Oh, it's bad as that, huh? Worse. Oh, excuse me, I've got to put the kettle on. Maid's day off, you know. May I help you? Oh, of course not. Then you could help me pass muster when we come back. <laughs> oh, you know... <laughs> You're not at all what I expected. What did you expect? Well, from the way Mum talked, I don't know. Oh, all right, come along. <laughs> Daisy Minns was not a beauty by any means, but there was a spark and honesty and good humour that I found most enjoyable. We got on famously, but it was too soon to think about Daisy. Perhaps later. It was the evening of the fourth day after my arrival in London that I met Mildred Vickers. It was at a pub in Hammersmith. She was a sweet little thing, large brown eyes, rosy cheeks, perhaps encouraged by a touch of rouge. <laughs> Altogether delightful. I must say that I flattered her with attentions not usually received in a flowers dinner of the theatre. She was very uh, grateful. Uh, you? Yes. Goodbye. Thanks very much. Goodbye? I wanted to tell you earlier tonight, I can't see you anymore. You can't? You're, you're joking. I'm not. You've been a duck. We've had a lovely time, but it's finished. My young man's coming home tomorrow. He phoned me this morning from Southampton. His boat's come in. Your young man? Your young man. Shh, you'll wake up the whole house. Oh, Millie, Millie, you'll be the death of me. Now, come along. Let's get inside. You can't. I'm serious. It's like you said. Laughs and all <laughs> sorts of fun. It's, it's over. Now, you be a good boy and... and, and... Now, you get inside. Oh, stop it. Don't you go for me. Show... Millie, Millie, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lose my temper, but the... You know, the, the way you told me, you know, it, it, it's a shock. I thought you were joking. I'm sorry. Really, I am. I, I'm, I'm very fond of you, Millie. A, a chap gets fond of... And, and then... Uh, well... One last kiss, Millie. Just one last kiss. Of course. I knew you'd be a sport about it. <laughs> Millie, Millie, I can't let you go. I can't. Oh, crikey. Now, Millie, let's talk it over. There's nothing to talk. I'm just going to sit quietly and talk. I promised I'm not going to make any trouble for you. I just want you to understand. Understand what? I'm tired. Oh, please, it's not too much to ask. We'll just have one drink and you listen to me. And if you want me to go, I'll go. I'll quietly, no bother. Everything's serene. I'm sorry. 
It all sounds ever so sad, but uh, my young man's coming in tomorrow. And Will you stop talking about your young man? No, I, uh, Millie, I'm... I didn't mean that. You know, I'm not angry, but now, uh, please, now, will you look here? There's so much that... so much that I can give you. I'm not young, you know, anymore, but you... you found me attractive. You do find me attractive, don't you? Well, don't you? What are you smiling about? What the heck? What are you laughing at? Millie! 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 Stop your shouting. You think I want the police on me? No, 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 no. You want me to go? That's right. Well, I'll be as good as my word then, Millie. There's no hard feelings. Of course not, silly. Farewell drink? Not for me, thanks. Just a splash. We're going to drink to your young man. Uh, wouldn't he just laugh if he knew? Wouldn't he just? You ought to find yourself a nice widow. Someone like you. And settle down. Yes, I know what I you mean... Yes, I know what you mean, Millie. Here we are. Thanks. <laughs> no obvious. Like a good boy. Millie. I suppose I really should tell you that I don't care about you at all. That not <laughs> that I was saying before. I didn't mean it, you know. I don't quite understand why I said anything. You're not worth it. You're a nasty little... Uh, yeah, yeah. That burns, doesn't it? It doesn't burn for long, though. You, you, you annoyed me very much by chucking me over. Not that I cared because of you, but me, you see. And it isn't going to be long. I just want you to know. Can you hear me? I just want you to know that every time we went to a public place together, I was ashamed. Ashamed to be seen with someone like you. Good night. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Charles Lawton in Neil Cream, Doctor of Poison. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, if I need a new coil for my car's Autolite electrical system, won't most any coil fit? Sure, Hap. And white shoelaces fit black shoes. But they don't match. Right you are, Hap. But every part in the Autolite electrical system does match perfectly with every other part to give your car the smoothest performance money can buy. You mean the Autolite coil, distributor, generator, they're all related? You bet they are, Hap, because the units that make up the complete Autolite electrical system and their thousands of component parts are all related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill and are used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. Well, that's good enough for me, Harlow. So, friends, take a tip from me and specify Autolite original factory parts when replacements are needed for your Autolite-equipped car. You'll find it pays because you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Charles Lawton in Elliot Lewis's production of Neil Cream, Doctor of Poison. A dramatic report well calculated to keep you in suspense. next two or three nights, I stayed in at the boarding house. I don't think I felt well. At least I couldn't sleep. My sleep wasn't at all restful. I had dreams. Ugh, horrible, frightening dreams. I remember that just before I dropped off to sleep one night, soon after Millie was taken, that I thought to myself that I must speak to Mrs. Mintz about the cooking. All that heavy stuff. Dr. Cream! Doctor! Dr. Cream! Wake up! Wake up, Doctor! It's all right! It's all right! Uh, anything the matter? 
I, I hope you'll forgive the liberty, sir. I'm afraid you were having a nightmare. It sounded as though you were being murdered. Murdered? I, I, you thought I was, uh... Oh. Uh, did I say anything? Uh, you screamed, sir. Oh, is that all? It sounded... Well, I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> That's quite all right. It's very good of you to be concerned. You're that young medical student Mrs. Minns told me about, aren't you, Mr... Uh... Bridgman, sir. Yeah, that's right, Bridgman. We should have a chat one day soon, lunch perhaps. You specializing? I haven't made up my mind yet, Doctor. Good, good, good. Lots of time for that, hmm? Yes. Well, I think I'd better go back to bed. I hope to sorry to have troubled you. <laughs> Not at all, sir. Good night. Good night. Is he lying? Did I say something? Did he hear it? I wonder. Blast! But two weeks passed and I was safe. Nobody knew, nobody, unless uh, Mr. Edward Bridgman, the medical student. I'd taken him to lunch two or three times, and we'd talked medicine for the most part. But he had a way of looking, curious and knowing. I decided to write the letter to Scotland Yard. Commissioner, Inspector Waring here. I think we've got something more on that poison case in Hull and uh, Millie Vickers. Here's a letter. <clears throat> Uh, it says, uh, to whom it may concern, I have information which can lead to the arrest of the person responsible for the murder of Millie Vickers and Hammersmith. Is it worth 3,000 pounds? If so, leave the money at the pillar box on the corner of Kensington and Earl's Court Road. Plain wrapping paper will do. And it's signed, A. O'Brien, private detective. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, we'll see to it straight away. <laughs> It was uh, aggravating not to be able to learn whether the police had accepted my offer. I could have used the money, but other more important things were occupying my time. Mr. Bridgman, I loathe bright young men, and I had a feeling that he was watching me cleverly and carefully. I had to put a stop to that. He knew that was certain, so I took to following him. As far as I could make out, he didn't voice his suspicions to the police, but there was a girl. He met her from time to time. And one day when they were having tea together, I think he saw me. Because from where I stood outside the tea shop, I saw Mr. Bridgman lean across the table and talk rapidly to his sweetheart. And that would have to be taken care of. It was. A week later. I beg your pardon. Oh, yes? Now, you must think me awfully rude. But aren't you Edward Bridgman's young lady? Why, why, yes, but I no, don't no, believe... No, no, that no, we... we haven't met. Oh. Edward's told me so much about you, though. I saw you together as I went by on the bus last, uh, last week. You were coming out of a tea shop. Oh, that's right, in Oxford Street. <laughs> yes. Now, look here. Mm -hmm. I wanted to meet you for a long time to talk about Edward. Oh? Well, I mean, uh, you're going together and I saw <laughs> I suppose so, in a way. Exactly. I'm very fond of him, you know. As a matter of fact, I've uh, uh, spoken to some colleagues of mine in the profession, you understand. And your Edward has a future, I think. Why, that's, that's sweet of you, mister. No, no it's Dr. Dr. Oh, Green. Of course, he has spoken of you. You're staying at the same boarding house. Yes, we are. I hope he's, hope he's said nice things. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> but you know Edward. He, he doesn't talk much about anybody, does he? Yes, uh, th th that is what I wanted to talk to you about. Now, do you think we could go somewhere? I, would you like a spot of tea which I could drink? Well, I, I don't know. You see, I really should... Uh, please, it's really important to Edward. <laughs> Clever little devil, but a rotten actress. You know Edward. He doesn't talk much about anybody. Does he? <sighs> because I could see through her plan perfectly well. Trap me into an admission of guilt and then call the police, but I was ready for that. Well, it was a little sad. I didn't even know her name. She had a, she had a pretty face. I, I, and a pretty figure. 
No name. Just Mr. Bridgman's young lady. It was dark when we walked along the quiet road leading to our house. I'd been the perfect gentleman and had escorted her home. She died behind a hedge. Convulsively, but within three minutes. I made sure that there was no outcry, nobody heard, nobody saw, and nobody cared except perhaps for a medical student. To whom it may concern, ask Mr. Edward Bridgman, who lives in Mrs. Min's boarding house, what he knows about the murders of Millie Vickers and Joyce Hamilton. He killed them both. I offer this information, greatest A. O'Brien. Dr. Cream. Hello, Daisy. Come in for a chat or is it a sore throat this uh, Neither. Mum asked me to ask you something. Oh. She wonders how long you'll be staying. Well, I'm perfectly happy. I hadn't thought of moving. Why? I don't know. Mum didn't say. Uh, I'll tell her what you said. Daisy. Daisy, just a minute. Close the door like a good girl. I want to talk to you. Gentlemen lodgers' doors must be kept open when receiving female company. <laughs> Drat that notice. I've read it too, and I just closed the door and don't be silly. Daisy, come here. Have you read about the murders, the poisoner? Oh, who hasn't? What do you think? Well, I don't, but Mum says he's one of those, you know. Hey, shall I tell you a secret? What? You won't tell. Of course not. What? I think I know who the murderer is. Really? Have you told the police? Well, yes. I wrote them a letter. I told them who it was. No. Who? Come here. Edward Bridgman. Oh, you're pulling my leg. It's a very pretty leg, Daisy, but I'm not. Well, how do you know? I uh, know it's Dotty. I know. I do. Oh, Dr. Cream, you are the one. Oh, I should know better than to listen to you always joking. Well, I've got to go downstairs now. Mum will be wondering. Daisy, Daisy, wait. I've got to tell you something. Darn, I could have killed her. She thought it was a joke. There had been so many things to tell her. Clues, proof, everything to help get rid of the medical student. And she wouldn't listen. And after she'd gone, I was afraid. I was afraid that she might remember. Damn, I could have killed her. It was Saturday, two days after I'd posted the letter to Scotland Yard. I thought I'd take a walk to Hyde Park and was leaving my room to go downstairs when the front door bell rang. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Mrs. Min? Yes. Uh, we're from Scotland Yard. Police. I should like to have a word with Mr. Edward Bridgman. Does he live here? Yes. Won't you come in? Is anything wrong? Is he at home? It's in the drawing room, I think. Shall I call him? Yes, if you don't mind. Not at all, I'm sure. Mr. Bridgman. Yes, Mrs. Min? Mr. Bridgman? Yes? I'd like to speak to you, if you don't mind. Oh, what about? Uh, tell me, is there somewhere we can... Um... Afternoon, everybody. Oh, hello, Doctor. Nice day. I thought I'd take a walk. Uh, Mum, all right if I go to the cinema with Agnes? Oh, Elise. Oh, run along, Daisy. Don't be home late. Mr. Bridgman. Come along, Daisy. I'll walk along with you. You were right all the time, Doctor. Oh, and to think I didn't believe you. Uh, uh, what do you say, miss? Oh, just a little joke of ours, Inspector. Nothing at all. Come along, Daisy. I can't wait. You know, uh, uh, Daisy. Just a moment, sir. Uh, miss, do you know something about this? Oh, of course I do. But well, Dr. Cream told me he wrote a letter to you about Mr. Bridgman. He told me, didn't you, Doctor? Dr. Cream... You wrote us a letter, signed A. O'Brien. Bridgman's your man, sir. I wanted to spare him the humiliation. That's your man. I told Daisy I thought he might, might try to harm what me. What are you saying? I never... It's all right, Mr. Bridgman. I don't think we shall need to trouble you. Come along, Doctor, if you don't mind. There are a few questions we should like to ask you at the yard. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Uh, 
Having set down this case history, my own, let the judge and all responsible for my unfair trial be warned that death will come to them from an unseen agency. What I did, I did in honor and right. No human power has the right to condemn me. Those that died, died because of their own misdeeds. I have been merely the instrument of justice. For this, I cannot hang. Neil Cream, M.D. Dr. Neil Cream. It won't hurt, will it? I can't stand pain. Is it? it won't hurt, will it? Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Charles Lawton. Friends, this is Harlow Wilcox again to remind you that Autolite is the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. In 28 plants from coast to coast, Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats. These include complete electrical systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. Ignition engineered Autolite standard and resistor type spark plugs. Autolite batteries, including the famous Autolite Stay Full battery. Electric windshield wipers, fuel pumps, speedometers, and many more. All are backed by constant Autolite research and are precision built to assure long dependability. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, our star will be Mr. Tony Curtis in another story based on actual events. A dramatic report concerning the bribes offered and taken by college athletes. A story we call The McKay College Basketball Scandal. In weeks to come, we shall also present Miss Jean Crane and other stars, all on Suspense. Neil Crane, Doctor of Poison, was written for Suspense by Anthony Ellis. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morawick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Featured in tonight's cast were Charles Davis, Betty Harford, Jeanette Nolan, Georgia Ellis, Elma Lawton, Herb Butterfield, and Joseph Kearns. Charles Lawton may be seen in the fall tour of the first drama quartet presentation of the dream sequence of Man and Superman by Bernard Shaw. And remember, next week on Suspense, Mr. Tony Curtis in another story based on actual events. A dramatic report we call The McKay College Basketball Scandal. For the location of your nearest authorized Autolite service station or your nearest Autolite spark plug or battery dealer, phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>